Hi everyone, this is Brian Hayes and welcome to an introduction to improvisation on the saxophone. Improvisation simply means instant composition. There are many four and five year university degrees on the subject of jazz improvisation. All I want to cover in this first tutorial today is the concept of music being made up of pitch, duration and intensity. Intensity being the dynamics, the volume with which you play music. If we rule out dynamics for the purpose of today's conversation and focus on pitch and duration, that's where I want to start to get you thinking about improvisation. If we think of duration as rhythm, the rhythm with which you play notes, pitch relates to which of the 12 chromatic notes and in which octave you are going to play, which note are you going to play. Duration we'll talk about today as being the rhythm with which you're going to play it. So an example of that would be if we take the three notes A, C and F. I'm on the alto saxophone here today, but you can relate this to whatever instrument you're playing. So A in the second space, C in the third space, F on the top line of music. If we just play those notes over and over again in a cycle, we'll get this. Now, if we change not the notes, keep the notes in the same order exactly, don't add in any new notes, but simply change the rhythm of those notes to rolling quavers, quaver triplet sound. We get this famous song, one of the most famous songs ever for the saxophone. Now, if you followed swing music and big band music, you'll pick that up as Glenn Miller's In the Mood, a real famous saxophone feature from the 1940s big band era. Now, did you notice that the sound of the song change dramatically once we change the rhythm, the duration of the notes. Now in a way, basic improvisation is just what we've done. We've converted one melody and we've improvised in this case just the rhythm component of music. We've changed the rhythm We've improvised the rhythm and we've come up with a completely different sounding song. Now, in the same way, if we played, for example, a D major scale descending through one octave on the alto sax, this would be D, C sharp, B, A, G, F sharp, E and D. They are the notes on any instrument, but I'm just saying if you're trying to play along with me, be aware I'm playing on an E flat instrument here and I'm speaking in the pitch terms on this alto sax. So I'm going to play a D major scale in descending order. Okay, that's the famous sound of a major scale played backwards from high to low. If I again improvise the duration of each note, and alter the rhythm of those notes, not the order of the notes and not the pitch of the notes, I can get this melody. So the famous song Joy to the World is simply a major scale played in descending order, that first strain of Joy to the World. So the very first thing you can do as you set off on a lifelong journey to become a competent improviser is to change the rhythm of a set series of notes. Now an example of that might be if we play Happy Birthday, which is normally in 3-4 time. 1, 2, ba da 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 2, 3, 1, 2, Three. It's actually written as a waltz, 3-4 time. I'll just play it in normal 3-4 time as you'd expect to play Happy Birthday. That's the 
song that the world knows and it's played there in strict timing. Let's improvise on Happy Birthday. We're not talking here about playing a wild jazz solo. We're in fact not even talking about changing the order of a single note. Let's imagine now that we're playing Happy Birthday in 4-4 four, four time, not 3-4, and that we've got a string bass player, Ron Carter, a legendary bass player on the upright bass. That sort of sound in the background. And now we're doing this, a one, two, a one, two, three, four. We're not allowed to change the order of the notes or the notes, but let's improvise how Happy Birthday would sound if the legendary Ron Carter was in the room with me now on bass and we were doing an alto sax and acoustic bass version in 4-4 four, four swing timing of Happy Birthday. It could go like this, one, two, a one, two. <laughs> Okay, could you imagine the walking bass in the background there? Just another example to start to dip your toes into the water with the concept of improvisation. Start by changing one thing, and that's the rhythm with which you play notes. You can do it on a scale. You can just say, well, I'm going to play a, you know, a G major scale, ascending and descending. First of all, just as quavers, even time. Now force yourself to play a different tune using the same notes in the same order, but create your own rhythm. Maybe this. Sounds completely different, but if you wind the video back, you'll find I didn't cheat there. I played just the notes of a G major scale in ascending order and descending order, but I changed the rhythm. Now, finally for today, I want to play you a video of my arrangement of Bye Bye Blackbird, one of the great jazz standards from the 1920s. When it was originally written, Bye Bye Blackbird was just a stiff and stodgy sort of pop tune of the era. The original melody on the sheet music would sound something like this. So that sounds like a kid just trying to learn how to read music. But all of the great improvisers from Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald and anyone who's anyone in jazz at one point or another has either performed or recorded Bye Bye Blackbird. It's regarded as a great tune to improvise on. Now, I want to share with you that I don't actually know the chords of Bye Bye Blackbird. I haven't got the sheet music to it. I've never bothered to look what the chords are. I can hear what they generally are. Major chords, seventh chords, major seventh, minors, minor sevenths, minor six. I can hear all that in the background. But as a single note improviser, I could not care less what the chords of that song are. What I want to be good with is the melody, the original melody, so I understand what the tune is that I'm playing, and then just to trust my heart and my head as to where I want to change that melody, initially with the rhythm, everything we've been talking about today, just playing the notes of the melody with a different rhythm. And you'll hear... On this version, I play it on the baritone sax, which is the saxophone one full octave lower than the alto. It's pitched in E-flat like the alto, but it's an octave lower. And you'll hear me, I'll slip and slide into the notes of the melody. I'll play an alternate melody. I'll play some chromatic runs. I'll play some notes that don't sound right, and I'll hold on to those notes, sort of add some tension and release. But I'm doing all of it from what I'm hearing in my mind's ear and what I want to say from my heart. I absolutely am not thinking that the band's playing an A minor seventh at that point in time. Therefore, if I play an A Dorian minor mode and I run up and down, you know, it'll be great. No, I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm just improvising as I'm speaking to you now. I'm just freely telling a story, my story of a jazz classic, Bye Bye Blackbird. I hope you've got something out of this tutorial. It's an enormous subject. I'll post some more videos in due course to help take you a little bit further on the journey.
Bye for now. Bye for now.